right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we thank and praise God for blessing us to come back to you once again. We're coming back with video number four, and we have been talking about Jesus is not the Father. We've been asking the question, who's right, our Pastor Geno Jennings or our Elder Kendrick Murray? And so we're coming back this time, continuing to talk about the fact that Jesus Christ is not God the Father, that there is a distinction between Jesus, Jesus Christ the Son and God the Father. And also we want to make it plain that Jesus Christ is not the only one sitting in heaven or God the Father is not the only one sitting in heaven. But the both of them are sitting in heaven. And as we said in the very beginning, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, God the Father, who is the one true God, Jesus Christ, the Word or the Son, and the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. And as we said, the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is is also in the earth, for he is the one that convict and convince, convince men of sin. All right, so we're going to call your attention back to St. John chapter 17. I believe that's where we left off, St. John, John chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. And we just want to thank God for blessing us and giving us this opportunity to come back and present this word of the Lord to you tonight. Amen. All right, St. John chapter 17 beginning at verse 1. And this is what it says. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. All right, let's take a look at that verse again. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, he called him Father, this is the same Father that we were told to go ye baptizing in the name of this Father. He calls him Father. That is his name. And yet we have some people who will say uh, Father is a title. Father is not a name. Father is a title. Although we have the, the, uh, the, uh, de the uh, uh, dictionary uh, giving us the definition that, that title is a name. But we have people like uh, some of my apostolic friends and my Jesus name friends, Jesus uh, name only friends, will say, uh, well, Father is a title. Well, if Father is a title, you want to keep declaring that Father is a title? Father is what Jesus called him. And if Jesus called him Father, I feel very comfortably calling him Father. Let's understand that. Jesus, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, Father, you hear that apostolics? Father, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. So Jesus says that he has a father. And yet we have, uh, uh, we have, um, I can't even think of his name right now. Geno Jennings, we have Geno Jennings and the other false preachers and prophets over the internet saying that Jesus uh, didn't have a father, that Jesus is the father. All right. They saying that Jesus didn't have a father, that he is the father and that he's the only one that is sitting in heaven. Or we have those that say, well, God, the father is the only one sitting in heaven. Or we have those that said Jesus, the son is the only one sitting in heaven. And then we have those that have a nerve to ask the question, well, when we get to heaven, how many will we see? We already know how many we're going to see. The Bible told us in, in, in our first uh, John chapter 5, verse 7, how many we're going to see. He told us we'll see three. It's foolish for you all to ask the question like that when the word is already telling you the answer. He said there are three up there. There are three in heaven, not one, three. And as I said before, the problem is you want to make these three one entity. You want to say it's only one up there when the Bible clearly tells you that it's three sitting up there, that it's three up there. Glory to God. All right, so we see in verse 7, in our chapter 17, verse 1, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may Glorify thee. Now we want you to take your Bibles and let's turn to Exodus 33, verses 17 through 23. Exodus chapter 33, 
verses um, 17 through 23. 17 through 23. Exodus does chapter 33, verses 17 through 23. All right. 33 verses 17 through 23. And we want to keep in mind the scripture we just read where Jesus lifted his eyes and began to pray to the Father. All right. Now, Exodus 33 verse 17. Because we're going to see in Exodus 33 verse 17 that we're going to see who God the Father is. A lot of times we talk about God the Father, but Many times we don't give an example where God the Father shows up in the Bible. All right? God the Father is a spirit person, just like Jesus the Son is a spirit person. All right? And the Holy Ghost is a spirit person. All right? They are all spirit persons or spirit individuals or spirit entities. All right? Exodus 33, beginning at verse 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me my, thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. This is what God the Father, that same Father over in St. John 17 and verse 1 that Jesus was praying to. Here he is right here. This is God the Father who is distinct or different from Jesus the Son. This is him right here. This is God the Father who has a body, who has hands, who has, who has face, a face, who has body parts just like you and I. All right? Except he is a spirit. God is a spirit, but a spirit has a body. And that's what some of you all don't understand because you've been taught over the years that a spirit is not a person, that uh, a spirit person that you can put your hands on, that can be touched, that has body parts. And I'm showing you that God the Father has body parts. He is a spirit person. All right? So he says in verse 19, and he said, I would make all my goodness pass before thee. In other words, Moses, I'm going to show you me. And there are some of you say, well, the Bible says that uh, God cannot be seen, that no man has seen God at any time. You have to know how to rightly divide that word. You have to know how to rightly divide and interpretate that scripture. There have been a lot of people God has shown himself to. Moses seen God several times, and there have been other people who have seen God. All right? So he's showing himself to Moses right here. This is God the Father. This is not God the Son. This is not Jesus. This is God the Father right here. Verse 19, And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. You mean God has a hand? Well, I thought God was a spirit. You mean God has a hand? Well, he says right here in the word he has a hand. Don't you have a hand? All right? Yes, God has a hand. He says right here in the word. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, that while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cleft of a rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. While I pass by. I am a spirit person. I am a spirit. I am a spirit individual. I am a spirit entity. And I will put my I will put my hand, I will cover you with my hand while I, God the Father, pass by. Alright? Look at verse 23. 
and I would and I would take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back part, but my face shall not be seen. You mean God has back parts and he has a face, even though he's a spirit? And you say he can't be seen, but yet he's showing himself to Moses. You have to know how to write or divide the word of truth. This is God the Father right here. This is telling you and showing you right here that Geno Jenin is a liar when he said that Jesus is God the Father. This is not Jesus here. This is God the Father. This is Jesus in 17, uh, 17 St. John 17 verse 1 praying to God the Father. Lifting his eyes up praying to God the Father. These are two separate, distinct entities here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. All right, now let's take our Bibles and go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. As we see the, the difference or distinct uh, or the distinction between God the Father and Jesus the Son. And the both of them are sitting in heaven with Jesus being at the right hand of God the Father. All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. This is what it says. For I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. All right, let's look at this again. Let's look at this again. Verse 18. For I am he that liveth. Well, let me ask you this question. When did God the Father ever die? When did God the Father ever die? God the Father never died, but Jesus the Son died. So this scripture here cannot be talking about God the Father. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. Was dead. I am he that liveth. The word liveth has T-H on the end of it. And those of you that follow me, you know that I always point out when you see a T-H on the end of a word, it means continue or to continue or continually. All right? It means to continue. So Jesus said, I am he that liveth. That means that I'm living right now. And was dead. I was dead, but now I am living. I'm sitting at the right hand of God the Father. So he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive, Jesus said. Well, Geno Jennings and the other false prophets along with him said that Jesus does not live anymore. That he's dead. He doesn't live anymore. So there is no more son of God. So the son of God is dead. There is no more son of God. But Jesus is just saying that I'm living. All right. I am he that liveth. I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. All right. That's Jesus the son right there because God cannot die. God cannot die. All right, now let's let's look at uh let's go to Isaiah or Isaiah 44 and 6. And we know this is the scripture that Geno Jennings loved to use to try to prove that God the Father is the only entity that sit in heaven. He always used this scripture and said that God, there's nobody beside God the Father. There's nobody besides God the Father. But Jesus is sitting right beside God the Father on the right hand. All right? Let's look at this. Isaiah 44 and 6. All right, this is what he says. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Now, Geno Jennings always used this scripture to try to point out saying that God the Father is by himself. Saying that God the Father is by himself. Well, if God the Father is by himself, how can he explain this being God the Father by himself over here? And God the Father is saying in, in, in verse 6, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. And then you go over here. Let's take our Bibles now and go to Revelation chapter 1. Verse 11, let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 11, and look at this. Look what verse 11 said. Start at verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book 
and sent it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. All right? Look at verse 12. And when I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and girt about paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flames of fire. And his feet was like unto fine brass, and if they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of, the, out of his mouth went a sharp two-headed sword, and his countenance was as of the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Now this is Jesus Christ right here who is, who is saying, I am Alpha and Omega, just like God the Father over here is saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Now, how can, how can this be God the Father and there be nobody beside him? If God the Father is the only somebody in heaven, how can there be nobody beside him? And both and, and God the Father is declaring here in Isaiah 44 and 6 that he's Alpha and Omega. And we know that this is Jesus Christ right here in Revelation 1 declaring or saying the same thing that he's Alpha and Omega. Now how can we have two saying that they're Alpha and Omega if they're not God? The two, the two of them are God. But they are separate. They are separate and distinct. We just saw that God the Father uh, showed Himself to Abraham. I'm sorry, showed Himself to Moses. That was God the Father showed Himself to Moses. That is distinct from Jesus the Son over here in Revelation. So we see right there that God the Father is sitting on His throne with Jesus Christ the Son sitting at his right hand. We see that there are two right there. So we make G Gino Jenin a liar again. So there is no way that you can say that God the Father uh, has nobody sitting beside him. That he's the only somebody there. No. God the Father is sitting in heaven and Jesus Christ the Son is sitting on his right hand. Alright? Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 5 verses 1 through 10, and we, we, we'll verify that right there. We'll show you. We'll find out who, who's the liar, me or Gino, me or Gino, me or Gino, Gio Jennings. We'll find out who's lying, me or Gino Jennings, all right, and all his false preachers that preach those lies. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, this is what it says. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, sat on the throne a book, with ten within and on the back side, I'm sorry, let's start back over. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on, sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. All right, let's look at verse 1 again, chapter 5, Revelation, verse 1 again. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Verse 2, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof? Alright, let's go back to verse 1. What do we see, or what did he see? He saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Now who is he that has the book in his right hand. It's God the Father who has the book in his right hand. All right? God the Father, that same God the Father that we saw in Isaiah 44 and 6, that same God the Father that we saw in St. John 17, verse 1. All right? This is God the Father with a book in his right hand. All right? Look at verse 3. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 4, And I wept much, 
because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 5, And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now who is that? Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David? It's Jesus. Jesus. That's who it is. All right, look at verse 6. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it, as it had been slain. A lamb. Who is that? As it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Well, that lamb is Jesus Christ. He's the one that has been slain. I need you all to go back and study this and look it up. It's telling you right here that God the Father has the book in his right hand and Jesus Christ is going to take the book out of his hand. He's the only one that is worthy to take that book out. So what does that show you, my brothers, sisters, and friends? That's telling you that there is God the Father and Jesus the Son sitting here in heaven. Jesus sits on the right hand of God. God is on his throne in heaven. And Jesus sits on the right hand and he is the only somebody that is able and worthy to take that book. Look at verse, verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat up on the throne. He took the book out of the right hand of God the Father. And when he had taken the book... The four beasts and the twenty and four elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden uh, vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals, there, the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's Jesus Christ, who was the only one that was able to take the book out of the right hand of God the Father. So my brothers, sisters, and friends, we have presented to you that Jesus Christ and God the Father are there in heaven Jesus sits at the right hand of God. Jesus is not God the Father. God the Father is not Jesus. They are separate and distinct. All right? One is the Father and one is the Son. All right? And we have torn down that doctrine, that false doctrine of Geno Jennings and all these false preachers that preach that garbage that he preaches. All right? We thank you, my brothers, sisters, and friends, for listening to us. And thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye.